This is my super detailed video about exactly how I built this digital modular synthesizer. You're watching Nerd on the Wire. So this is my homemade digital modular synthesizer. Uh, I've made another video here which you should probably watch first uh, where I go through how the synthesizer is used. Um, but in this video I'm really going to get into the details so be warned if you don't want to hear sentences like uh, the Arduino Mega 2560 communicates with a node server via the COM4 virtual serial port uh, then this probably isn't the video for you. So to give a quick overview of how the synth works before getting into the details the physical controls on the front here are uh, connected to an Arduino uh, which sends data to a computer. A uh, computer is running a web server which listens for the data and passes it to a web page which generates the audio. Uh, I'll get a few caveats out of the way to start with. Um, it's like an early prototype, it's kind of a proof of concept project, so it's a bit ugly, the code isn't super optimized, the wiring is hilarious, and the whole thing is just kind of fragile. Um, but like none of those are fundamental problems with the concept, they're just kind of weaknesses of this iteration of the design. Um, I've got lots of ideas about what the next version of this project uh, will look like, which I'll go through towards the end of the video. So let's start with the basics. Uh, it's a badly made MDF box. Um, I chose MDF because it's cheap and comes in very thin sheets. Uh, this is three millimeters, which is just about thin enough to get a potentiometer through um, without having to route out any extra depth from the back. Uh, at the time I made this, I was pretty inexperienced with wood and I didn't want to do a lot of cutting, so I bought a bunch of A3 sized MDF sheets and based the dimensions around that size. So the front panel is exactly the same size as an A3 piece of paper, um, which is also really handy for planning the design. Um, to hold the box together, I just cut up some scrap pieces of wood and screwed into them. Uh, I should have countersunk the screws, but I didn't really know what a countersink was at the time. Um, there's also a shelf inside the box which allows me to mount two separate levels of electronics, uh, one for the top row of modules and one for the bottom row. Um, I'm going to show you the circuitry next, but before I do that I should probably explain a slightly controversial design choice. Um, what I probably should have done and what I was told by a lot of very knowledgeable people at Maker Faire that I should have done is worked out the basic idea using a breadboard like this, um, checked that the concept worked and then made a proper circuit using a strip board like this uh, with everything soldered together. Um, the thing is I thought this whole project was pretty unlikely to work and I didn't want to spend ages soldering something that wasn't going to work. Um, plus I really like using breadboards because they're kind of like Lego. Um, you make something, you show people, uh, and then you take it apart. Uh, I knew this was a model that was likely to be taken apart at some point. Uh, it was always a prototype, so rightly or wrongly I decided uh, to buy a bunch of extra breadboards and I went about making my circuit. Um, it's simultaneously kind of ugly and beautiful, wonderful and terrible. It's like a horrible example of being in too deep uh, and afraid to back out. So um, I'm still on the fence about whether wiring everything up like this was a good idea or not. Uh, it did survive the trip uh, in my van from Oxford to Newcastle uh, unscathed, so that's kind of a plus. But uh, I don't know if, if I took the, if I take this in the part again at some point, which I probably will. Um, I'll be able to re rescue a lot of the components. Uh, so. I think that it would have been a good decision if I do that, but I'm probably kidding myself. It was probably a bad decision. Anyway, it's too late now. Um, the, uh, the sockets on the front are um, mono 3.5mm sockets, um, which just screw in place. Uh, and they only need one wire soldered onto them to connect into the circuit, so that's good. Um, so even though there's loads of them, and they're a little bit fiddly to put in, they weren't too much of a problem. Um, Potentiometers were like a much bigger faff to wire up uh, because they all need three wires, like five volts, ground and signal, and there's just absolutely loads of them. Um, so I'll probably try and find a, a nicer way to wire them up in the next version. Um, so the brain of this project is an Arduino Mega 2560, um, which is kind of a, a big Arduino basically. Um, 
If I made this project again, I'd probably use a Teensy because uh, I've been using those a lot recently and I really like them. They're powerful and got lots of pins, but uh, I happen to have an Ardu this Arduino left over from another project um, and it's got loads of pins as well, So, um, and that was kind of what I needed, so I just went with that. Um, the Arduino gets information from what the user is doing on the front panel um, and sends it to a PC via serial commands. It's basically reading two things, the values of the potentiometers and uh, which sockets are connected to each other. Reading from the potentiometers would have been fairly easy if I'd stuck to 16 of them, um, but I didn't want to be limited by the number of analog inputs on the Arduino. Um, you see I've got a lot more than 16 here. Um, so I used a bunch of these chips, uh, the 4051 multiplexer. So each of these chips takes eight analog inputs uh, and lets you select which one you want to read. Uh, I ended up using five of these which meant I could use up to 40 potentiometers. I think I ended up with about 33 in total. Um, so hundreds of times a second uh, the Arduino switches all of these chips to channel one uh, and reads five different potentiometers, one for each chip. Uh, then it switches to channel two and reads the next five values and so on. Um, you can switch these chips really fast, uh, so it basically gives you unlimited analog inputs, which is really cool for something like this where you've got loads of analog inputs. Um, the other thing the system needs to know is which sockets are connected to which other sockets. Um, this is a really interesting challenge. I could quite happily make a whole other video about just this aspect of the project, and uh, I may do it at some point. Um, but I'm going to show some restraint because even for an in depth video like this, it's a bit much. Basically, by using multiplexers again, uh, the same chips as before, each socket can either be set to an output or an input. Uh, you set the first socket to 5 volts, then all the other sockets are set to be inputs. Any of the input sockets that are reading 5 volts must then be connected to the first socket. Then the second socket is set to 5 volts, and all the other sockets set to be inputs, and so on. Um, so you basically try every possible combination uh, and, and continue doing that until you've checked every possible connection. Um, so once we've got this information from the front panel, the Arduino sends it as a serial message via USB. Uh, and that's pretty much everything the box does at that point. Um, the computer now has to listen for the messages and make some sounds. So there's a lot, there's a lot of different ways I could have done the sound generation, uh, but I ended up choosing the one that I already had the most experience with, uh, which was essentially to make a web page which would act as a synthesizer. Uh, I happen to have quite a bit of experience with the web audio API in JavaScript, so I decided to use that. Um, it's kind of a case of if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, um, but it did the job. Um, so the web audio API is this really cool section of JavaScript. Uh, that can perform all the basic functions of a synthesizer, like uh, it has oscillators, sample players, filters, reverb, delay, etc., all of that stuff, and just kind of works like a modular synth, um, the way you can connect the different elements together. Um, so I decided to write a set of JavaScript modules that would work like synthesizer modules. Uh, I'd define what the inputs and outputs would be for each module, um, and what controls it would have. Uh, I made most of the basic modules you'd find in any synthesizer, so you know, oscillator, uh, envelope generator, filter, etc. Now you could theoretically make some like really crazy modules pretty easily, like a uh, YouTube video player or a speech synthesis module. Um, I'd love to do that in the next version, but I was just trying to focus on the basics for this design. So I had a working control box and a working software synthesizer, but I needed a way of getting the information from the Arduino into the web page uh, that was running the synth. The way I did that was to write a basic web server in Node uh, and install a Node module called Serial Port, which listens for the serial data. Um, I then installed a WebSocket module uh, in Node called WS, which allows high-speed communication between the server and the page. Um, so with that done, everything was kind of in place. Um, I chose the layout for the front panel, uh, drilled the holes and wired everything up. Um, 
had to tell the software which socket numbers referred to which inputs and outputs and which potentiometers are supposed to control which parameters and then I was done. Um, so here's how I set up the synth when I want to use it now. Uh, I start by plugging in the Arduino uh, into the computer via USB uh, then I open a terminal, go to the project directory and run the node server like this. Then I open up a browser tab and go to localhost 3000, which is the address of the local web page. Uh, then I just turn up my speakers and start playing. So I took two projects to make of a UK and Newcastle this year, um, this synth and my retro looking synth guitar. Um, there's no denying that the synth guitar looks a lot better than this sort of sloppy beige box and it was like no surprise that the vast majority of people were uh, way more interested in the guitar than they were in the modular synth. But what I found really cool was that there were about sort of two or three people over the course of the weekend who found the modular synth like really cool. Um, and that's kind of what I was expecting, it's like a really niche project, especially in its sort of unpolished prototype form, but for certain people it was really exciting and they could sort of see the potential and that's what made me want to push this project onto a second version. There's like so many things I could improve that I don't quite know where to start. The most obvious thing is to get rid of the horrible breadboard wiring and design a proper circuit board. Um, the next thing, if I can figure out an elegant way of doing it, would be to make each module removable, um, like a real synth module. I think if it would make the whole, yeah, if I could do that, it would make the whole project kind of less daunting um, as a build because you could, you could build things more gradually, just build one module at a time. Um, 
rather than, you know, the, the wiring behind here is just absolutely horrible and you have to kind of do it all at, all at once and, you know, when you, when you remove one thing you end up removing something else. You know, it's a, a properly modular, modular design would be really cool. Um, and I also think it would add a really fun element of modular synths, which is kind of missing from this design at the moment, which is being able to chop and change the layout and easily add or replace modules. You know, at the moment, I've got my two oscillators, I'm sort of stuck with that. That's, you know, put another one over here or whatever, but, you know, I've already fixed the layout in this corner, etc. So it'd be really cool to be able to change the layout over time. Um, the other thing I'd definitely like to do is add uh, a working MIDI input. I did add a MIDI port, um, which you can see here, but I didn't bother wiring it up because the software's latency just didn't make live input viable. Um, I added a sort of fake MIDI input using the computer's keyboard, but it's not that great. Thing I'm not sure about is whether to keep improving my JavaScript software synthesizer or go in a different direction. An idea that really excites me is to get rid of the big computer entirely and run a software synthesizer directly on something like a Teensy or a Raspberry Pi, which you can actually fit inside the synthesizer itself. Um, it would be a lot more elegant, but don't know whether either of them would be powerful enough. Um, it would be really cool though because it would make this into a standalone instrument that you could play at gigs without a laptop. Um, I might do some experiments to see how possible it is. I know that the, the Teensy is almost within reach of the Teensy Audio Library, so um, yeah, it would be really cool to see if, it's, if it would be doable with that. My other idea though is to use uh, someone else's software instead of my own. Uh, there's a really nice open source modular synth called VCV Rack, which you should go and check out. It'd be super cool to use my synth as a controller for VCV rack, um, where adding a module to the real life synth would automatically uh, add the same module on the screen. And where connecting a patch cable on the synth would create a connection on the screen. Um, it would almost certainly sound a lot better um, than anything I could code myself, because there's a whole community of coders and musicians who, you know, a lot of them would have a lot more skill than me, and they're, they're making these modules, modules for VCV rack. Um, so yeah. They're likely to sound a lot better than, than mine do. Um, so you kind of, you know, it's the standing on the shoulders of giants thing rather than trying to build everything from the ground up. Um, the problem is I'm not very experienced with writing C++, um, which is what VCV Rack seems to be written in. Um, and I suspect that customising it to do what I want is probably beyond my ability at the moment. But, you know, in an ideal world, I think, you know, this controller and VCV Rack would make a really cool uh, combination. Either way, I've got plenty of options to take this project in new directions. Uh, just making this video sparked some new ideas that hadn't occurred to me before. So I'm going to ponder on things for a little while, uh, maybe explore a few ideas on a small scale uh, before committing to another big build. So I really hope this video inspires someone to make a digital modular synth of their own. There's a GitHub repository of this project, which is a bit of a mess because there's so much stuff in there. Um, but it might contain enough clues to get you started if you want to have a look. Um, if you go to github.com forward slash Matty Brad forward slash modular synth uh, and have a look at the code, there's even some almost accurate circuit diagrams that could get you started with um, how I've done the circuitry. If you have any ideas for the next version of the project, uh, or if you want any advice about making a similar project, just drop a comment below and I'll try to reply. Um, thanks for indulging me while I rambled on for far too long about uh, my digital modular synth, and hopefully I'll see you again soon for another video.